All right, let's go ahead and look at an example of applying this mean value theorem. So in this example, we're asked to find the average rate of change of this function f of x, which is defined to be x plus 1 over x. We're working on this interval from 1 to 3, so we want to find the average rate of change of f on the interval from 1 to 3. And then we want to find where this function's instantaneous rate of change takes on the value of the average rate of change. And this is going to require the use of that mean value theorem. And so our mean value theorem guaranteed us that this was possible as long as our function was continuous and differentiable on a nice interval. And that's what we have going on here. So first we're going to have to calculate the average rate of change of our function, find its value over our interval from 1 to 3, and then we'll have to do some algebra, find the derivative of our function, and then figure out where the derivative takes on that value. But first we got to find the uh, average rate of change of our function. And so our interval from a to b is from 1 to 3. So we're going to have to evaluate f of 3 minus f of 1 all over 3 minus 1. And so our function f is just x plus 1 over x. So f of 3 is going to look like 3 plus 1 third. We have to subtract away from that f of 1, but if we plug in x equals 1, we get 2. And then we have to divide that by the difference, or the length of our interval, 3 minus 1, which is 2. And let's see, that should evaluate to, well, 3 and a third minus 2 is going to be 1 and a third, or 4 thirds. 4 thirds divided by 2 will give us 2 thirds. So we know the average rate of change of our function on this interval from 1 to 3 is 2 thirds. Now we have to figure out where does this function's instantaneous rate of change take on the value of 2 thirds within our interval from 1 to 3. All right, so remember the instantaneous rate of change of our function is given by the derivative of our function. And so we have to find the derivative of f before we can find out where the derivative takes on this value of 2 thirds. Remember our function f here is x plus 1 over x. I'm just going to rewrite that as x to the first plus x to the negative 1 to help us see how to differentiate that. We're going to have to use our power rule to differentiate that. So the derivative of x just ends up being 1. You can find that through the power rule or just remembering, well, that's like a linear function. The derivative is just the slope of that line. And for the derivative of the second piece of our function, we have to use the power rule, bring the exponent out front, then decrease the exponent by 1. So the general derivative of our function is looking like 1 minus x to the negative 2, or we can rewrite that as 1 minus 1 over x squared, just depending on what we want to do with it. And here I think we want to write it in this form because what we want to do with it is solve an equation working with our derivative. Right? The final part of this process is find out where our function takes on that instantaneous rate of change. So now we're searching for that special c value within our interval from 1 to 3, where our derivative takes on the value of the average rate of change. So we're trying to figure out when is our derivative 1 minus 1 over x squared equal to our average rate of change of 2 thirds. So if we want to solve this equation, we can do it in a few steps. Maybe we'll subtract 1 from each side. That would give us negative 1 over x squared is equal to 2 thirds minus 1. Remember, 1 is like 3 thirds. So 2 thirds minus 3 thirds gives us negative 1 third. And well, now if we multiply both sides by negative 1, just to cancel those negatives out and reciprocate both sides of our equation, flip them both over, or we can do that through cross multiplication as well, we find that x squared is going to be equal to 3. Well, then to find our x value and finish this problem off, we have to take the square root of each side. And technically, there are two solutions to this equation, right? Uh, x could be equal to positive square root of 3 or negative square root of 3. But remember, our interval is from positive 1 to positive 3, and only the positive square root of 3 is within that interval. So now we found the exact location where our function's uh, instantaneous rate of change uh, takes on the average rate of change on this interval from 1 to 3. And so if we clear some space in the upper right here, we can graph our function f of x, x plus 1 over x, on our interval from 1 to 3. We can visualize that secant line connecting the endpoints and look at its slope. And then we can also go to the point where x is equal to the square root of 3, 
graph our tangent line at that point, and we should see that those slopes are parallel because those slopes are equal because at that point our function's instantaneous rate of change is the same as the average rate of change.